and I need you. Oh, I need you. Walking down the desert roads, water for my thirsty soul, I need you. Oh, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears It's like holy water on my skin Hey! Dead man walking, slave to sin I want to know about being born again I need you Oh God, I need you Take me to the riverside Take me under that house I need you Oh God, I need you Your forgiveness Is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears It's like holy water Your forgiveness It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears It's like holy water on my yeah, it's like holy water on my skin. Yeah, it's like holy water. And now it's Kim Couch. Good morning, church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are we doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. First service acted sleepy, which was silly because they got an extra hour of sleep. But you guys always get to sleep in, right? Okay. Today, uh, if you're in the youth group and you've signed up to go to Extreme Youth Conference in Tennessee, the first payment is due today, $100. If you have not signed up and you don't have that first payment, you can still sign up. Okay, um, and then let's see, what's today? Oh, after the service, if you are a youth or young person that's planning on going to Peru in the summer and you want to fundraise, um, there's an informational meeting right after service with Dodie at 1230. Flag football championship game today at 230. Um, Bibles for Dummies tonight at 7. On the 5th is the Women's Bible Study at 630. Uh, the seventh is RC Cares with the beautiful Erin Omnis. And oh, uh, Friday night is uh, scooter night at LifeNet. So if you have a little one and you want to go to that, but you don't have a scooter, they do have some scooters there. But if you have a scooter, um, take it because they don't have enough for everybody. 
So, and then Saturday is the men's breakfast, and that is going to be here at RC this this Saturday because the youth that's going to fundraise for Peru is going to make breakfast. So that's nice. Um, so uh, it starts at 7:30. Breakfast will be served at 8. And then don't forget, we're going to have a baptism service on the 24th. That will be here in this room, not out in the creek. Um, it's too cold. But if you're interested in being baptized, um, talk to Pastor Mark and Bill Cannon. I'm handing it off to him. And this is going to be my last time doing announcements. So. <laughs> it's, a, it's a secret to everybody, right? Yeah. Hi, everybody. How are you doing this morning? Um, just uh, I wanted to come by and, and do a quick word as quickly as I can possibly do it anyway. Um, obviously, Tuesday's election, and I'm sure it's been on everybody's TV, everybody's mind. You're probably sick of it. I get it. Uh, especially, I just wish people would just stick to what the issues are instead of just all this back and forth stuff, right? But, you know, here's a curious thing I just want to kind of point out. You know, over the last number of years, it's really everywhere in the public arena they tried to push Jesus' name out of it, right? We're not allowed to talk about Jesus. And, you know, unfortunately, there's apparently a lot of teaching or at least uh, maybe an idea amongst Christians that we shouldn't talk about these issues and, and about voting. Some people don't feel compelled to vote. Well... I just want to point out something. This is just so, there's lots of biblical reasons, and I'll get into that, but I think just the most simplest thing to understand is this. Do you really think God wants this to be to only people that are against him are voting? Do you really think, just think about this. If you're a Christian, you don't think you should go vote. Well, if, if all the Christians don't vote, then all the people that are against Christians are voting. They're ones deciding on everything in the world as far as our government goes. So number one, right there should tell you that's crazy. That's just deception. And here's the things that we need to understand. Um, God did indeed put us in charge of taking care of our own. Uh, when it comes to our obligations, we have to let people know what's true. And if, these, if we don't let them know what's true, and if we don't stand up for Christ for these, you know, it, it used to be 50 years ago that it was normal for people to bring up these things all the time. Just think, if it hadn't been, what about if, if the abolitionists who were Christians hadn't thought, come up about slavery and brought that up? What about that? You know, what about... What about Moses? Do you think Moses had something to do with the government? Obviously, yes. What about uh, Nehemiah? What about Daniel? What about Jesus when he was calling out the Pharisees who were in charge of the government at the time? Do you think all of these different things would signify to you that we have to have a voice in our government? If we, exclu if they ex if we exclude everything that's Christian from the government, then that means we'll just end up with a total secular, secular government. And if we don't, and if you have to remember that in the founding of this country, one of the things John Adams said, we have to have a good, godly, and moral citizenship in order for this to work. We're not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic, which means we elect officials to go do our jobs for us, okay? And if we don't, and, and since we're the people and we're the ones in charge and we're the ones that have the power, if we lay that power down and don't do something about it, then it's on us. So please, we have to make sure that we're voting. Here's the issues that are most important as far as I think for what we see that are coming up right now. There's top three anyway. Let's begin, of course, with this idea of the border. You know, in Acts 17, Paul addresses the fact that God established the borders. Now, also in Hebrews 13.2, um, it speaks to the fact that we are to be good to the sojourner, to that immigrant that comes into our country. And so, yes, that's biblical also. 
But remember, God is a God of order, not of chaos. And in Romans 13, Paul addresses the fact that we should, people are we're meant to follow the laws of the land. So the problem when we have an open border is that we're not doing it by the law, we're not being selective, and we're not really helping everybody that you might think. Just think, you know, we stopped, this administration stopped doing DNA testing almost two years ago. That would identify whether that young lady that's coming across the border with that 35-year-old man is really related to him or not. That's opened up a huge sex trafficking problem. They say there's over 635,000 children in this country because of that. Also, the drugs that have come across. If you allow your borders not to be ruled the way they're supposed to be, then the people that are coming in, you are not doing the godly thing. You're not doing the right thing. You're not treating them right. So that's another problem that we have right now. We have to keep in mind. Plus, if we overwhelm different communities by stressing those resources out, by having way too many people, so not having control, we're not doing them or ourselves any good. So you need to vote for the people that are going to take care of that. Whichever party you choose, whatever you're going to, I'm not telling you to vote for, but you have to take a biblical worldview, and that's who you vote for. Neither one of these candidates are Jesus. Jesus is not on the ballot. But we have to find the one that stands closest to our biblical worldview and to what the biblical values we have, and that's who we vote for. The next issue I always think is very, very important, obviously, is family. Whose family values, whose, whose values are going to be closest to what Christ has called us to, what God has called us to? We have to keep in mind that whenever we're talking about uh, what God's created, he created a family, he created marriage, he created government. All three of these things are his, his areas. So you need to take a look and see who stands for the marriage and who stands for the family the strongest. And these are the people that you should vote for. I think that's pretty cl cl clear and cut and dry. And then lastly, of course, is the issue of abortion. It's a powerful issue. A lot of people um, can have different views about different things, but I will tell you this, biblically speaking, if we look at Genesis 1, 26 through 27, we are made in God's image. Psalm 139, 13 through 16, we are knit in the womb and not hidden from God. Psalm 127, 3 through 5, children are a heritage from God. Exodus 20, 13, thou shall not murder. These are, God's, these are God's commands. This is what we have to stand for. Now, unfortunately, neither one of the parties is giving us a, an abortion view that I totally believe in, which is, you know, life begins at conception. And all life is valued and sacred. So I don't believe there should be abortion, period. However, we have to once again look and see. One group wants abortion on, on demand no matter what, no matter what time, no matter where. The other one at least puts limits. So choose the one that's most closely aligned to you and your beliefs. But you have to vote. If you don't vote, then what you are actually voting, and what you're voting is that somebody else who has a different view from you is the one that's going to count. There is no way that you can't make yourself known you have to stand up for Jesus somewhere. So with that, we can pray. Father, Father in all the heavens and always right here with us as close as our very next breath. Father, be with us today. Guide us. You know what's coming. You know this day. You know exactly what we will need, so give us exactly what we need for this day. Give us the words to speak. Lord, please be in this service and guide and direct our pastor. And through all of our worship, we honor you with everything in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome to church, everybody. So.
If you would, please go ahead and uh, if you would like to stand and worship with us, why, please do. humans you know all those things that we think are important you don't have to carry those around it's done wipe clean give you a firm clean foundation that you can build something good and prosperous from if you allow God to build it with you and he is worthy of our praise amen worthy of every song we could ever sing the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, it's Jesus, Jesus 
is the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. All the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me.
first service this. Um, Tony and I have been walking this path for about the last eight, ten months of trust in God. And, and it's not been easy. There's been a lot of times when, you know, we've made decisions and we've had to second guess ourselves and think, We've asked God, is that what you want us to do? Is that what we wanted to do? Because if it's what we wanted to do, just wipe it out. Take it away. We don't want to do anything out of your path. And you know what? We've asked all along the way, God, show, show us, show up. Let us know we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. You know, and it, there got times when we got really discouraged and we would look at each other and think, man, this, is, this can't be what God wants us to do because nothing's falling into place anymore but we weren't patient enough. See, we have a tendency to want to do things our way all the time. And if it doesn't happen within our timeline, then we think it's not in God's plan. But you know what? I can tell you that God has showed up every time. He's showed up. It hasn't been anything that, I mean, and, and everything has been above and beyond what we thought it would be. We had in our mindset what we thought it was going to be. And then God would provide above and beyond it. And we would look and we would say, well, maybe we shouldn't because that's more than what we need. And God was like, no, this is what you want. I know what you need, but this is what you want. I'm giving you what you want, not what you need. You know, and it's been a tough journey. It's not over yet. But all along the way, the one thing we've learned is that a lot of times we've had to lay down our things. We've had to lay down our wants. We've had to lay down our desires. We've had to give everything up totally to him. And like I said, there was times when we say, God, just take it away. If this is not what you want us to do, even though we want it, take it away. Wipe it out. Start us over. And, you know, that's what God wants us to do. Those things in your life that you're holding on to, he wants you to lay them down, the good and the bad. If he gives you something good, he doesn't want it to replace him. He wants you to use it for him. That's why he's blessing you with it. So there's a lot of times when you have to lay things down in order to look up. And the more you look up and the more you lay down, the stronger you become in Him so that you can do what you need to do when the time comes. You can be brave and you can be bold. So don't hesitate to lay things down and trust in God because the blessings He has for you outnumber the stars in the sky. You just got to be bold and brave when it comes time to lay it down and then pick it back up. Enthroned in glory, my Savior King, your loving kindness has welcomed me. Though I'm unworthy of majesty, you wrap the lowly in royalty, so I will lay my crowns down at your feet. You are holy, holy, and I will give my life as an offering. You are worthy, so worthy, Lord. Here at your altar to seek your face, broken and poured out without restraint in full abandon before my king here I surrender my everything and I will lay my crown down at your feet you are holy So worthy, Lord. 
are worthy of our praise. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. And holy, holy, holy is the Lamb upon the throne. Join with all of heaven in the everlasting song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb upon the throne. We join with all of heaven in the everlasting song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb upon the throne. We join with all of heaven in the everlasting song. And holy, holy, holy is the Lamb upon the throne. We join with all of heaven in the everlasting song. And I will lay my crown down at your you are holy, holy, and I will give my life as an offering. You are worthy, so worthy, and I will lay my crown down at your feet. You are holy. Shamble, you alone. 
lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. So, Father, we come here today. Lord, we come here for you. We come here for you to worship you, to praise you, to thank you, to worship you. And, Father, we just thank you and for that opportunity, God, that we can do it together as a group of your children. And we just pray, Lord, that you, Holy Spirit, sweep amongst us. Lord, let us feel your presence so powerful we can't deny it. Let your word, Lord, sink so deep that we can't ignore it. Let it become such, so much a part of our lives that we can't brush it aside. Just help us, God, to be who you want us to be, to do what you want us to do, and to be the representatives that you need us to be, Lord, to our family, to our friends, to our coworkers, to people on the street, God. Lord, some of them will never know you unless we show them. Lord, there's so much out there. Lord, but the world needs you, and we need more of you. So we thank you and we praise you, God, for this day, for your word that Pastor Mark's going to bring to us. 
We thank you for its truth. We thank you for its strength. We thank you for its mercy and grace. And we just pray, Lord, that we use it and live it every day. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mountain be raised up, valleys be made low. Yeah, I think I do. All right, I'm just waiting on slow pokes to clear out. How you doing? Good. I gotta, I gotta get out of your way, right? What? I don't want you stepping on this. Stuff. What can I do to help? Nothing. Kick that out of the way. What? Just don't step on it. Kick what? Kick it. Oh, I don't want to. Yeah. Can you take any more time? I mean, can you? <laughs> Good to see everybody. Thanks for coming to church today. We're glad you're here. So glad you're, what? Don't tell no stories. You don't know no stories on me. Away with you. All right. Good to see everybody. Hey, we got a special announcement today. Today. Are you interested? I want to introduce to you a young couple. Eli and Kara, if you'll come up here real quick. This is Renewed Strength Church, fifth youth pastor. We've, we've hired Eli and Kara to come and be our next youth pastor. Justin, we're just going to put him over to the church. The church is growing over there. And we just put him over there full time to get busy and get after it. And he's outgrowing youth ministry a little bit. You get mid-30s, shaving cream ain't fun anymore. <laughs> Anyhow, so young couple uh, that we're very excited about. You know Kim that does announcements? This is her son, Eli. He was raised in our church here. Kara came along later and, uh, and started coming to church before you Kind of, you were a Baptist, right? We won't hold that against you. <laughs> in any event, let me get this microphone for you because I want you to talk. Um, in any event, he, Eli was raised in church here, grew up here, was, has helped Justin in youth camps for years and years and years and years and years. And they've been ministering uh, groups in a church over in... Yeah, we, we were helping Pick, out Pick was, the Valley Piqua, yep, Piqua. The so they've been doing youth ministry, uh, but I always like to say it this way, because it was true with me. Uh, Eli works an engineering job, so he works a full-time job. That's what I did when I started youth pastoring. Here's our deal. I did not see a way to have a family and kids and pay my bills doing ministry. I just didn't see a path. So I went into the engineering field just to have a job. And to do that for a while, but I had a heart for ministry. You can, you can see it. So I had a heart for ministry my whole time. I believe the same thing about Eli. Eli has had a heart for ministry. He's been serving a long, long time, uh, wherever he's been. And uh, he has a heart for that. He just couldn't see a path to have a family. By the way, have you seen the picture up here? I just want you to see the small print here. It's very important. Can you see that? Baby three is on the way. So they're a very busy young couple. They're excited about doing youth ministry. When I met with them, here was my thing. I knew, I knew he had it in him. I knew, I knew for a long time. I've watched him serve, serve, serve when nobody was paying attention. What I was concerned about is she has two babies and one coming. And I thought when I interview them, they said, do you want Kara to come? Yes, because I want to know if she's into it or not. If she's not into it, She was more excited than he was. <laughs> That's not true. But anyhow, she was very much into it. So we're happy today to have a very exciting young, brand new fifth, fifth round of youth pastors here. And we're hoping for wonderful and amazing things from them. 
Eli, you say whatever you'd like, okay? Yeah, I just, I just want to say I would not be here on this stage if it wasn't for my wife, Kara. Like, I, I helped out with Justin all when I was a youth, and I've helped out after I graduated. Um, but in college, I probably wouldn't have come back if it wasn't for Kara. Kara pushed me in ways that I didn't know I needed pushed, and I am here today on this stage because she allowed me to continue being in faith and allowed me to be stronger and. Yeah, she, I, I owe it all to her, and God put her in my life when he needed to. So, yeah. And I'm here, and I, I'm very excited to be in this program, and I, I'm ready to be used by God. And I want to invite you guys, if you have any passion in your heart, to help me because, as he said, I'm going to be full-time. So I'm, we're going to need some help, and she's going to be full-time with the kids. So we're going to be here as much as we can, and we're going to do as much as we can with the youth. And we have big plans, but those plans involve help so we're, we want to be part of this community as much as you guys are and we want to build this church up as much as God wants us to so yeah, yeah. we're excited to have them right <laughs> excited to have them excited about what God's doing right we're just very excited about the the transition over at LifeNet Church happy happy about that everything I think is going according to plan the puppet master the God Almighty is moving moving like he does, moving pieces right where they need to be in the timing and the whole, you know, if you, you know, if, if you know how God works, he works in a perfect way and in a perfect time. And, and we're excited about all those things. So we can see it. We're looking for great things. Of course, now this young man's a pastor here. So I want you to all to treat him with a great deal of respect. You know what I mean? Don't treat him like you treat me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, but anyhow, we're excited about that as a pastor, you know, he has some authority around here. I'm sure he'd be like me, not use it, but, but just respect what God's called him to be, okay? And try to help him and serve him, and, and he'll serve you and your kids, okay? We're happy. We're thrilled. We thank you for saying yes, okay? Very good. All right. And it takes Kim out of the announcements, right? Kim hates doing the announcements. Your mom hates doing the announcements. She's like, do I, do I have to pray? That's what she always says. I'm like, yeah, you have to pray. So, hey, glad you're here. Let's pray real quick. Father, thank you. Lord, we preached in the first service, but that's behind. So, Lord, we press forward. We pray, God, for words in this service so they're the proper, right, perfect words, Lord. Pray, God, for your anointing. Don't want to do this without you, Lord. So help Pray, God, you open the ears of the hearer. God, be right here. Give us wisdom and leading. And bless our time together. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in Romans today, Romans chapter 1. It's voting season, you know, the whole country, the whole thing. I, Bill talked a little political to you. Um, I, I'm a Bible teacher. The truth is in the Word of God, right? The truth is in the Word of God. We're going to get into that pretty deep. We're going to go a little bit controversial today, if you don't, don't mind. But I just want you to know, God didn't call me to condemn anybody. God didn't call me to judge anybody. I'm just, the uh, best way I know to say, I'm just a simple Bible teacher, right? And uh, hope today I can just plant the Word of God in your heart and let God sort it out, right? Let God sort it out. He ultimately is a judge, and uh, just going to teach Bible to you today in some hard, um, difficult verses. Some modern day, hmm, what's the right word? Societal issues. Paul, Paul had never been to Rome when he wrote this letter to them. They believed the church at Rome started... Out of Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit fell, there were people who received the power of God on that day and went back to Rome. It lists the nations that were present on the day of Pentecost. And a church began in Rome, and uh, Paul knew of them. And Paul was in Corinth when he wrote a letter. In the very beginning of this letter, we jumped down to 16, he's saying, hey, I can't wait to be with you. That's what he's saying. I've heard, I've heard about you. I can't wait to be with you. Let me just write to you simple things. So this is a simple book about faith. That's why it's ordered first in Paul's letters. That makes sense? Because it's just not a complicated book. 
You know, it's a book about faith, living by faith. So we're going to plow into that pretty hard. And we're going to talk about, hey, when people get away from faith, what a big mess they get in. That's what this chapter is really about. So Paul begins, oh, let me say this. If you were heading the, by the trade routes in the day west, you would go from the Middle East through a place called Corinth and then over to Italy and Rome. So traders were already doing that. So Paul wrote a, this letter at Corinth and shipped it with the, the next boat going over to deliver this letter to the church there in Rome. Paul had never been there. Paul ultimately gets to Rome on a prisoner boat. I'm sure it's not the way he wanted to go, but he shows up as a prisoner because he appeals to Caesar and he gets uh, imprisoned there in Rome for a little while and uh, writes a bunch of these letters. But Paul gets there as a prisoner later on. So he writes this to them, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Now, Bill, I, I have been doing this long enough that when I see certain words, they're powerful to me. This word salvation. You know, salvation means somebody, hey, has rescued me from death. That makes it salvation means I was dying and someone rescued me. I tell this story about my mom drowning in a pool and somebody from the parking lot jumps in the pool and rescues my mom. And I think in my mind, I was a man that fell off a boat and was dying and drowning. And a Savior jumped into the water to save me. My salvation came from a man who saved me. And as I think about that, it always moves me. I, when I see salvation, it's a wonderful thing to know somebody saved me. Right? I was going to die. I, I had done everything worthy of death. Had no chance within myself at all to, to be saved. I, I was lost and undone, the old Course says, you know. Without God or His Son. That's what the old words used to say. But... He saved me. God sent His Son, a conscious, purposeful act, to save me. He pursued me. The smartest thing I ever did was hear Him calling. And He grabbed me up, hey, and He saved me. So when I see the word salvation in here, and then it, I'll back up here, and, and He says, I'm not a, ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the good news that is about my salvation. It's, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm not ashamed to tell the story about this great and wonderful thing that happened to me that caused me to be saved. Right? Isn't that? And you shouldn't be ashamed of the beautiful, wonderful thing the scripture teaches, the gospel teaches, hey, about the wonderful plan of God that saves us. Isn't that so what, great? So Paul just saying, hey, we shouldn't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of this wonderful thing the Lord has done for you. He saved you forever. Does that make sense? God saved me forever and ever and ever. Amen. Isn't that a country song? Anyhow. To everyone who believes. And I, as we preach today, I just want you to believe. The gospel teaches us the wonderful story of Jesus. His sacrificial giving of himself. And he wants you to believe that. I mean, who makes up a story? Hey, that causes the star of the story to die such a brutal death. There had to be purpose in it, right? There had to be this amazing, incredible, it was payment for all of our sins. All the world's sins was upon his shoulder. He carried my sin. I think about that, man. That Via Della Rosa, that whole journey to Calvary, he was carrying my sin. So it's this wonderful story where he's saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed. You know, he's probably speaking to the Romans. Because in the Roman culture, they hated Christians. 
And what, what happens in our, our culture now is it's heading that way, right? More and more and more. They don't want Christian. You know, God doesn't even show up anymore. God doesn't show up in anything anymore in government. In, in, in play. It's just not there. The national anthem shows up before God shows up in events. Does that make sense? But we're not ashamed, are we? Most exciting thing ever happened to me was I met a Savior. And He rescued me from my certain death. And He loved me. And He pulled me back up on that boat, man. <laughs> and He gave me life. Beautiful, wonderful, purpose-filled life. Amazing, incredible, living in the light life. For everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. Now, in the day, there was just two types of people. Uh, and I need to explain this. Even though the Romans were in charge, the Greek culture and language and flaw, all that stuff was part of the Roman society in the day, right? They spoke Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek. Paul's writing this letter in Greek. So he says, for the ones that were Jews, hey, they came to a belief in saving knowledge of Jesus. And for all the rest of us Gentiles or Greek Greeks, because that was the people that were living in Rome. Don't be ashamed of the salvation. It was for you and for you is what he's saying there, okay? All right, for it is, in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. <sighs> love these verses, just love these verses. Now, righteousness, righteousness, three-syllable word, that's getting out there for me. You get above three syllables, John, I, I can't spell it anymore, I just can't do it. But righteousness, let's just do it this way, just to kind of help. For in it the goodness of God the plan of God, the beauty of God is revealed. What's that? In what? For in it, this gospel, this life we found in a saving knowledge of God, right? Hey, the plan of God, the goodness of God, the righteousness of God, the beauty of God is being revealed. Now, love this. From faith to faith. So uh, you need to kind of understand that how God is trying to express his plan or his beauty or his uh, goodness is as you begin to walk from faith to faith. God is working with every one of us to reveal his good plan for our life, his righteous plan for our life as we walk from faith to faith. I always like to talk about, you know, David in the Bible, little shepherd boy David. You know, a, a lion showed up one day when he was watching those sheep, right? And he just put a pounding on that lion. Then a bear showed up, you know what I mean? He, a bear showed up. He didn't have no trouble with no bear. You know, the anointing of God was upon him, and God was with him, and he, he was a lover of God, and he just had the strength and the faith in God that, hey, you ain't getting my sheep. And then he took a sack lunch to his brothers on the battlefield one day. Little shepherd boy. Heard that big old bully Goliath saying, hey, you dirty, rotten lovers of God over there. Uh, let me do it in Mark's version. na 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 boo boo <laughs> Goliath making fun of, of course, the people of God. And David walks up on that, and David goes, <laughs> Let me at him. Let me at him. They said, oh, you're, but you're a boy. He said, I didn't have any problem with a lion. I didn't have no problem with a bear. I ain't going to have no problem with this guy, right? You know what David was doing? David started with a lion, had faith, for, moved on to a bear. Hey, for him, Goliath wasn't no big deal at all, man, you know. It only took one stone, right? And my point is, that's how God's working with everyone. You want to see the plan of God? You want to see the goodness? You want to see what God is doing in your life? Well, it's going to come faith to faith. Walking out there, 
I think the Bible verse here is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you think you're going to see it, it ain't called faith. Did I say ain't? I'm trying to do better. It isn't faith, right? If you could see it, if you could see a path to it, Eli, I'm so proud of Eli, you know. He's stepping out there. He couldn't see it, but he just kept, along the way, he would have never got to us if it, little by little he hadn't believed that God, even though he's an engineer, God was going to use him. And he would step out to be used, right? And then the next thing would come on. He'd step out into that, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, a crazy church that he grew up in couldn't have been more amazing than to come home. Calls him one day and says, hey, we've been watching you for years. You're young and dumb enough to do this. <laughs> Working with teenagers, I get it. Hey, what do you think about talking to me? And as I talked to him, hey, you could see this. You could see this. I don't know how. But I watched him my whole life. And if he's calling to another level, for me to see the righteousness and the goodness and the plan of God unfold in my life, I got to just keep on stepping. You know, I just got to keep on believing things I can't see, don't even know, don't even understand. I just got to keep walking in it. I can tell you my whole life has been that. My whole life has been step by step by step by step. I might get in trouble. I'm very proud of my wife. Just tell you faith, but the faith things, right? My wife went to Greenan High School. You know, does anybody else go to Greenan? Exactly, right? My wife, if she was a C student, that was good. They called her Dr. J because she was a heck of an athlete. She was a wonderful athlete. We started dating, right? And, uh, I had tested out of a bunch of college drafting classes. I could draw really well. Her senior year, she takes a drafting class. So on the weekend, I'd do her drawings for her. And she'd take them back in on Monday and turn them in. And the teacher would say, Dr. J, your drawings are getting better and better every week. So she, she went on to play college ball, but she wasn't into college or school at all. You know what I mean? And uh, that was okay with me. Just love her for who she She's wonderful, right? So along the way, I've watched my wife just do what I'm talking to you about. I've watched her step out. Sometimes as her husband saying, come on, you know, she's learning. She's, she, I'm, I'm working on her. <laughs> but I've watched her step out into stuff. And my wife over the years has, has developed this resume you can't hardly believe. So she was praying the other day. And uh, saw an opening, a position, a high-level position, and the Lord said, go for that. And I'm sure she said, I don't have the education, I don't have the qualifications for that, I don't know anything about, you know, I'm just... But the Lord said, go. So she puts together this resume and sends it in, thinking, Lord, I've just obeyed you in that. I just, I obeyed you, right? I heard your voice, you said, go, go for it. You know what? In all the applications that came in, they call her for an interview. I'm like, uh-oh. You're going to get in there, and, and these people all have master's degrees. They all have high levels of ed education, super, super amazing things. You know, they've done and accomplished the educational realm and all that. I'm thinking my wife's going to go in there, and they're going to figure out she doesn't have. She's got an associate's degree in accounting, and she barely made that. That's a joke. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. She laughed. Okay, she's laughing. So I'd have to correct it really hard if she wasn't laughing. But in any event, they call her and ask her to come for an interview. She goes for an interview, and they look at her resume and begin to talk about, "You've done this, and you've done this, and you've done that, and you've." And she just has a con. And they just fall in love with her. She comes out there saying, "I can't believe it. I'm probably." The less, least educated person in the, in, they're going to interview in the whole thing. She said, but they love me. I said, honey, you're easy to love. 
couple days pass, she's thinking, she's waiting on a Dear John letter, right? She's waiting on a Dear John letter. And all of a sudden, one day she calls me and says, Mark, they picked me. I've wet my pants. I can't believe they picked me. Well, here's the deal. Madison and Champaign County are combined in, uh, in public school districts, okay? Those two counties are grouped together. Funding from the government comes. Madison and Champaign County grouped together. And in Champaign County, there's school districts and superintendents, right? And in Madison County, there's school districts and superintendents. And then there's a superintendent over both counties' superintendents, right? And then there's a board of directors, hey, that are over that superintendent and manage $20 million in funding to the two counties. My wife got picked to be on that board. Now, what's funny, and I tell her this, we, right now at this moment in time, there's a LifeWise bus sitting behind our house. LifeWise is getting more and more controversial. There's going to be a big argument, you know. And my wife's saying, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. You know, and I'm just saying, you're like Esther, sis. God puts you on that board for such a time as this. I don't know what's coming. She's like, it's pretty exciting. I made this board. I said, oh, but God may be calling you to hard things. I don't know. She just went, oh, crap. <laughs> but my point is, can I, can I do it in her life? She said, I, I, I'm going to play basketball. I'm going to be good at this. She ends up getting a, the big athletic award at her school, top female athlete in her school. She goes on to college to play she ends up preaching to all them girls in college. I end up marrying all them. I was practicing marrying people and marrying all the girls she played college ball with. She was older than the coach and all the girls on the team. They would pass the ball to her yelling, Mom. <laughs> and she played two years college ball. So amazing, so wonderful. We had little babies. They changed parents' night to family night because she had two little babies. And she'd work this job. She worked for the, when she first started, she worked for the American Red Cross and she had to teach uh, um, lifeguards. And you know, part of teaching them is they teach when people are drowning. So she had to play the drowning person and these people practicing to be lifeguards would almost drown her in trying to save her. <laughs> and she kept praying and going to church. She kept volunteering for county boards. County commissioner one day to ask her to be a clerk for him. And I could just go on with a resume. She at one point says, I want to work with a, as a chaplain, as a patrolman with a highway, highway patrol. I want to step away from my job and, and do a grant for several years in, a, in the public school system. By the way, in that place, God gave us two little boys to raise. And she went on to the next job, hard things, you know what I mean? And went on to the next job. Now she's working for the, for the county engineer, secretary, big honcho for the county. She's killing me for everything I'm saying. And then the Lord the other day said, go for that job. You know, I tell you this story. When she first started working for the county, she was reading a verse in Daniel. Some of you have heard this. And she came to me one morning and she said, Mark, do you know anything about this verse? I said, what is it? She said, go work for the Persian king. It will be well with you. I'm like, I said, why do you care about that verse? She said, when I read that, it jumped in me. I said, it don't jump in me. A couple of days later, the county engineer who was from Iran asked her to come work for him. She knew right away that was the Persian king. 
So, guess what? It wasn't a bear, it wasn't a lion, it wasn't Goliath, but it was this thing and this thing, and from faith to faith, you start seeing the goodness of God's plan. You start seeing what God tried. God will do it, man. You just got to keep walking. You just got to keep moving. You just got to keep understanding. It's by faith to faith. You don't have to have the qualifications. You got God on your side. Right? There's a young man right up there in the balcony. Airport manager, or band is airport manager is in our church today. He's 25. His resume is amazing. Gosh, just to talk to him about all he's done. How'd you get all that done if I, by the time you were 25? I'm just telling you, you don't know what God's going to do. Right? You just keep saying, Lord, if you're with me, I'm not afraid. If you're with me, Lord, let's go. Let's go on this crazy journey, Lord, because you're going to reveal your plan as I just walk from step to step by faith to faith. God, you're just trying to reveal it. You're just trying to do it. And it goes on to say, and the just shall live by faith. How's God revealing his plan, his goodness, his righteousness for your life? Well, as you're not afraid to step into the next faith thing. Right? Yeah, I think three or four of you got it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. So he, he goes from talking about what happens with the righteous to what's happened to the unrighteous, right? So, so all of a sudden the bad things or the wrath of God or the punishment or the hard stuff comes. It's revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness. So if we walk by from faith to faith... God has a wonderful plan for our life. But especially in our society, as they begin to be more and more unrighteous, the wrath of God is revealed. And it doesn't work. In our country, the farther we get away from God, we're starting to see it all be revealed. This ain't working. And that ain't working. And we're farther in debt. And we got more trouble. And we've got more crime. And, and it's all breaking down. See, when we're unrighteous... The wrath of God starts, trouble starts to happen, right? And we're in a country right now because we've been unrighteous. It ain't working. What is it? Well, it's God, how God deals with unrighteousness, right? Uh, and the unrighteous men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So what's happening? They don't want to do it God's way. The Word of God is true, right? Everything else is a man's idea, right? So if you'll do it by the Word of God, so what they do is they suppress what the truth is to follow a man's idea. The desires and the wishes and the, the what's the right, the motivations of man. And the wrath of God begins to be revealed. What are we dealing with in America? Well, it's the unfolding of bad things because we're in an unrighteous culture, right? You can see it right there. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. What, what that's saying is, within the human body, God reveals who he is. You know, the most complicated thing, system thing, there is on planet Earth is the human eye. I don't know if you know that. A million connections from your brain had to connect, and your mommy's belly had to connect with a million connections coming from your eyeball had to be connected exactly. The complexity of the human eyeball is the most complex system, comple most complex thing there is in the entire world. How's that happen? God did it. That whole, as they figure it out, DNA, I'm so blown away by DNA. When two cells meet in mama's belly, hey, there's a DNA number that would go around from, from Earth around the moon several times, hey, to define the uniqueness of you. And from that DNA number, from those two cells, hey, that DNA number begins to give the order to form what those cells will be. So God, in the very beginning, identifies from two little cells, from conception. God has already hung a number on you, a, a unique, what's 
some kind of geo something something hey that's unique to you and in your mama's belly you begin to form to the uniqueness of the characteristics God put in your DNA from two cells from conception right and you grow and develop based on your DNA, the color of your hair the the pigment of your skin the whatever you know what I mean comes from this because what may be known of God is manifested in them we were created in God's image you can't escape that right for God has shown it to them they look right in the mirror at it every day and what do they do reject it for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen by understanding and understood by the things which are made even his eternal power and Godhead so they're without excuse listen sun will come up tomorrow bet your bottom dollar on tomorrow there'll be sun 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 hey you see God everywhere you see God in the fields and in the valleys and the streams and the rocks and the mountains in the sky I look at stars that are millions upon million light years away realizing it's taken years and years and years for the light I'm seeing in that moment hey to have traveled from that star it happened that years ago years ago the light that I see is just now getting to my eyes because of the distance between me and that star so his invisible attribute meaning every place you look he's there he's there he's there he's there right can't escape. so you're without excuse you can't say there's no God I tell myself sometimes to say hey when I was a boy I just want you to know I was all boy and they got me in trouble we like to blow stuff up, right? We would go, just to tell you how hillbilly, rednecky my family is, on our way to Kentucky to visit our grandparents in Eastern Kentucky, in Appalachian, uh, Kentucky, where my parents grew up, we would stop at every garage sale to buy plates. You say, why? To take these things uh, to Grandma's house to give her a new set of plates? No, to put on the hillside and shoot them with a gun. Shooting plates are the most amazing things to shoot in the world, man. As soon as you hit them, psh, you hear it, you know what I mean? It's great. So we could, if there's a garage sale, garage sale! We'd get mad if my dad wouldn't pull over. So we'd buy a cup or a saucer or something to shoot, you know? I shouldn't have told you all that. Anyhow, I've never known, hey, any time we've blown anything up that it ever ended in order. And that's man's best explanation of how we got here without God. Crazy. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful. Now, I run into people all the time, do you believe in God? Oh yeah, I believe in God. Are you serving Jesus? Well... <laughs> Um, uh, I believe there's a God and then normally what they do to me is they say but I'm a good person although they knew God they, a lot of people believe there's God do they surrender themselves to the Lord Jesus no or hey were they thankful so if you're someone who knows God if you're one who really knows him you're thankful because you realize God saved you from a, a purposeless selfish life right to be called to the kingdom of God the glorious wonderful kingdom of God right so and let me say this just to say if you're a Christian and you're not thankful let me just give you some advice if you're a Christian and you're not thankful you got your eyes on the wrong stuff so here's how I always want to say if I were a bookshelf I've never used that before if 
I were a bookshelf, John, God has to be on the top shelf. Right? And I have to be thankful. God can't be on the second shelf or the third shelf. He can't be any place. Just, I believe in God. He's someplace on my shelf. No, 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 no. God wants the top spot. That makes sense. He wants to be the Lord of all. He's Lord of the, all the everything. He needs to be Lord of your life, right? So it's not enough to say, well, I believe in God. And be thankful. But became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. So I think we started out, what's the word we started? Can I go back one here? We started out with that thought, God, hold on here, I'm just trying to get the right word. Uh, they became un, un, against all ungodly, became unrighteous, right? Now where were we, 21, were we in 21? And then they became futile and their, their thoughts they became unrighteous then their thoughts started getting and then their hearts started getting darkened professing to be wise they became fools so they started trusting in their own wisdom right oh I love that picture don't you love that picture Let's take care of this problem. Thinking, we live in a culture right now, they think they're so smart and they're really so dumb. Can't you look at our culture right now and say, that's crazy. Why are we funding our enemies to attack us? Why are we broke as a joke and we just let, I got to be, not be political, and just let the door leave wide open? We just leave doors wide open. We just, we can't, what are we doing? Why do we let people vote without an ID? Why do we, huh? Oh, we're compassionate and we're wise. And we're, don't, right, listen, don't be pulling that Bible stuff out on me. We got better ideas. Okay. How's that going for you? And change the glory of the incorruptible God into images made with corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. In the day, the Rome, hey, would not worship the God of heaven. They would worship these little statues they built with man's hands. Now, think about that. The Bible says they're without excuse to know there's a great big God up there that is so amazing, so incredible, but they would make these little statues and then worship. Maybe if we put enough candles around them, it'll be okay, right? In the one culture, they got four million gods one world religion they got millions of gods they can't kill a rat because I'm going to get trouble they can't kill a rat because they think it was a person re what's the word reincarnated in a rat so don't smash that rat that was Fred from 55 years ago And they began to worship foolishness, knowing that there's a great big God in heaven. It's amazing. Right? i got to hurry. Therefore, God gave them over to uncleanness. So we went from darkened hearts and now being unclean. You catch that? Gave them over in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. i got to hurry. Who exchanged the truth of God for a lie. So all of a sudden, they're not living in the truth. They're living in some kind of lie. That's where we are, people. They don't like people that live in the truth because they want to live in a lie. Don't be bringing that Bible stuff to me. Don't be bringing that. No, 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 no. Not that Christian. No, no, no. I don't. Or they twist it a little. 
and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. I just got to hurry. For this reason, God gave them over to vile passions. Uh-oh. So what happened? We've been going down this path, right? Unrighteousness. What was the next word? You think he got messed up, then their heart got dark, then, then uh, what was the next one? I should know this, I preached it twice. What? Anyhow, we're going downhill, aren't we? We're going downhill. So God gave them over to passions for yuck, vile, gross, yuck, passions. Right? And even their women exchanged the natural use for what was against nature. And you know what that's implying? The men are terrible. Men are knuck knuckleheads. And even women were doing it, right? Because the assumption here is women are a lot more smart than men, right? Women understand things a lot better than men. And even women were messing up, right? Likewise, also, men had leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men committing what was shameful, receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. I think you know the subject we're talking about. They went back to living like that. Give me that next slide. When I teach this subject, let me get to the word here that always gets me there. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. Now, their mind is totally corrupt to do the things which are not fitting. Fitting is a plumbing term. So when we get on this subject, I say, hey, plumbing 101. There are things that just don't fit. Is that enough said? Okay. So the Bible teaches they got, their mind became debased. Their mind became nothing but terrible. Vile, terrible. And they began to use their bodies, hey, for things that were not fitting. Now, I'll just be honest with you. I'm not the judge. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. That's not my job. I'm not trying to do any of that. I want to love people. I want to love everybody, right? But the biblical truth, I'm just a simple Bible teacher. I teach Bible. And that's all I'm trying to do with you today. I'm not trying to say, oh, we, we got to set on fire. We got to do that. We got to ah, we gotta love people, not be their judge, right? And do our very best just to earn respect enough to speak truth. But often their minds have become so darkened, they've made choices to slowly, little by little, move away from God, hey, into a very dark place. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, blah, 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 full of murder, strife, them in my own. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, uh, proud, boasters, of, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. We got a big problem with that right now. Dis undiscerning, trustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. The last verse. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, knowing what is right and wrong, that such who practice such things are deserving of death. We started out in this chapter talking about salvation, being saved from certain, certain death, right? But those who practice such things Not only do the same, but also prove them who practice. The second part of this verse is not just the people that are doing that, but the people that support that are also guilty. You got to be careful. Hey, that you're not a big supporter of something that's ungodly. Right? I'm just out of time. I, I could talk to you forever. I got stories upon stories upon stories. But God is trying to reveal his good plan for your life. Faith, 
by faith, by faith. The world's going the other way. And you see how they fall, 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 fall into where we are today, right? We've got to pray. Father, thank you for time together today, just trying to teach the Word of God, just a simple Bible teacher, Lord, not trying to judge, not trying to condemn, not trying to be any of that. Just teaching, Lord, how when we begin to not put God on the top shelf, how little by little we slide into very bad things. Help our country, Lord. Big week, big week, Lord. We ask for your power, your presence, your goodness. God, we certainly know you put up kings and take them down. Pray, God, for your will to be done, for your church to be faithful and true. Lord, help us to be a witness, a light in dark places. And Lord, help us to save some. That's our calling. That's why we're even here now. Lord, so help us in all these things. We give you praise. Walk with us, help us, guide us. Teach us how to live by faith. And we'll praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. Good to see you. Boom, 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 boom.